Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to share with you guys a series on YouTube that I think is a great one to watch. There's a lot of fishing content right now, good content, bad content, and if you're looking for something new to kind of watch that comes out here and there, this series, the Rate the Bait series on Mark Daniels page is one to check out. I'm going to share with you guys just a couple of a uh, couple notes from it why I think it's a good video series to watch. So if you are interested, you can go check it out cuz there's a lot of learning opportunities from this series. But guys, before we get into that, just remember I'm with Fish the Moment and right now we have our virtual lessons if you're interested in helping support me. Fish the moment, go check it out on our one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons. We also have our fall break uh, map breakdowns at Matt Steffen and Rainy Block at R. Johnny has the sonar uh, map, uh, sonar maps, the electronic map guides to help set you up your units as well. Check it out, fishthemoment.com. Okay, guys, on this video series, now just really quick, I watch, of course, the people I work with. Matt, Miles, Kyle, Randy, Johnny, you know, I'm, I watch those. But I watch a lot of other content too. And so if you guys like this, style video where I share other stuff I watched that I, that I think's worthy of me making a video on like I'm doing, just leave me a comment, let me know. Now this series, guys, also, I don't know Jacob Wheeler, Mark Daniels, Dustin Connell, or Adrian Advina. I don't know them. I have never talked to them, okay? So when I watch this series, and now like after I've watched all the video series, I've not watched the newest one. When I filmed this, the newest one just came out today. Um, but I feel like I know those guys. That's one cool thing about the series. I feel like I, I kind of like know them, uh, and they don't know me. I can go up to them, and it's just, you know, it's kind of neat to kind of watch that. But, guys, you learn so much from this Rate the Bait series. So what it is, they get baits. They've done Senkos, jigs, swim jigs, frogs, fishing line, and they get them in their hands, and they rate them. If they rate them off of how they're built, okay, they rate them off of how they used them. Some of the lures they don't use sometimes. Like there might be a jig or a bladed jig or a frog that they've just not used because there's so many baits. Most of the stuff they've used though. Fishing line was one. They all didn't use this line or that line, but they just, you know, rated it, you know, off of the what they've heard from people and they give their honest opinion. Or it seems like to me they give the honest opinion. I mean, you guys might think they're just trying to sell product, but it's some good stuff on it. Um, one thing about it. They come from different parts of the country. They have different backgrounds. They're all professional tournament anglers that are successful. As you guys know, Jacob Wheeler, considered one of the top right now. Dustin Cannell, which is one, uh, I mean, has been successful in college fishing, Bassmaster Opens, Bassmaster Elite, and now BPT. I mean, two years ago, he won two events in one season. That's hard to do. you got Mark Daniels, who's been successful in the FOW circuit, now in the BPT. Uh, Mark's a great dude. I uh, once again don't know Mark, but just by watching his channel and following him, dude's great. Seems like I can hang out with him. Then you got Adrian Avina, uh, who's from the West Coast. And Adrian, man, he won a big event this year on the BPT. Adrian's another stick. And so for me, as a former coach teacher, I always try to learn from other coaches and teachers. Okay, sometimes I'm coaches or high school coaches or college coaches, NFL. So for me, when I watch his channel, I'm trying to learn from some of the top tournament fishermen right now okay and when you watch these series when they're writing these jigs and they're touching them and they're talking you pick up so much little information there has been some episodes i have listened to twice to try to pick up now guys just on my background um i'm not a big bait like designer i'm not a big like thought about like i've never thought about designing lures or this or that now johnny for example and matt which started core tackle like johnny guys when he was 15 years old and i was 17 fishing with him we're catching fish on crankbaits he's over here talking about changing the style of the crankbait up to make it better or do this or that and i'm just over here like hey dude the crankbait's catching fish why you know and so but that's just like some people's minds <clears throat> are wired that way so when you hear these dudes talk like jacob Jacob was just a wheeler, was just a part of the um, new soft plastic series from Rapala. Okay, you can tell during these rate the baits, the other three dudes when Jacob's talking, they are zoned in on them because they know Jacob is into this. Now they're they're into the baits too, but like Jacob has been on the designing process. Um, it's known as a pool at his house, and he's probably put every lure known to man in the pool and tested them right. So Jacob, you know, kind of gets that respect from them. Uh, one thing that's interesting, like uh, just you know, just about them, like Dustin. Dustin grew up fishing rivers. Okay, Dustin didn't grow up fishing big lakes. Uh, didn't have all the equipment. You know, he did it on his own. 
um, you know, from a young from a young kid up. I mean, he did it on his own, and, and so he learned a lot on his own. And he, you know, you can tell when he talks about these baits, he shares that. And um, and he's always, you know, Dustin doesn't hold anything back. Like he brings punches on some lures. Like there was a soft plastic frog, and that wasn't just him. They all kind of talked about it. But there's a soft plastic frog on the frog video to where they said uh, it's not built the same as it used to be. And I got this soft plastic frog. I got them right there in my room. I got them when I bought them like four or five years ago, still in some packages because what remember guys, I live by Millwood, a lot of frog fishing. And then I got some newer ones recently, opened them up and they weren't built the same. Like I got, I mean, so so they, they talk stuff, but Dustin ain't afraid to, to share if the lure is not up to his par, which I like, he's honest. Um, it's always cool to hear Mark's side. Mark's been with Z-Man for a long time, and he talks about other companies, but then you get to hear about Z-Man, and that's some good stuff. And, and guys, it's just a, it's a good learning opportunity. I take a lot from it, and so that's why I made this video to share with you guys on, if you want to go check a new series out, check it out. So there's the frog one I think is interesting. The fishing line one's interesting. One thing about the fishing line, okay, guys, get ready. Uh, they Monofilament, I think, might have been the first line they talked about. And I think, you know, Canel, uh, DC, shared an experience on why he doesn't use mono anymore, I think. I think it might have been with a buzz bait or a topwater. If I'm wrong, guys, I'm sorry. But he, he, he shared why he didn't use mono, maybe. And then Wheeler was like, hey, I still use it for crankbaits in situations, do you? And, D and DC, pretty sure, said no, he doesn't use it for crankbaits. And so they had a conversation right there about using monofilament line for crankbaits. Okay, now I... Me personally, I like to use fluorocarbon, but there's a time I use some mono, but I got guys I fish with, Johnny is one, and I have some other friends that use mono predominantly for crankbaits. So it's good to hear these two professional anglers talk about it. And then, you know, you're here listening, watching, getting to something out of it, okay? Pretty neat. So that, that one about the fishing line, that was one that stuck out. Um, one thing on the bladed jig one, they did one on bladed jigs. Of course, they talked about the chatterbait, the jackhammer, but Wheeler, and sometimes Wheeler doesn't share everything. They can't because they do this for a living, and Wheeler puts his time in, and, you know, he's not just going to give the world everything. But he, they kind of mentioned that there's a blade of jig Wheeler throws that he didn't want to talk about. And I'm sure we're trying to figure out what it is. They might be doing a joke for all I know, but I bet there is a blade of jig out there because he mentioned it, and he's like, I'm not going to talk about that blade of jig. And they're over here talking, and I'm over here like, what blade of jig is it? I have a guess what it is, but I'm not going to share that with y'all guys because I don't, I don't know. Don't want to spill the beans. Um, what's another good one? Swim jig or the little finesse jig. They did one on finesse jigs that was cool. You get to hear about the finesse jigs, the hooks, this, you know, the skirt. They talked about the finesse jig, uh, and then the swim jig one was good as well. On one of the jig ones, they brought up a jig, and I remember calling Matt right after it because I saw Matt might have did a video on this jig too. And man, guess what it made me do? Go get some of the jigs, okay? I'm not going to share that jig with you, all right? Uh, but they, when one of the jig videos that they talked about it, it, it did, I'm not going to share the jig, okay? Um, Y'all got to go watch this series. I can't share all the juice, okay? Remember, I put the time in. I kind of learned. But anyway, uh, don't get mad at me if that's the case, all right? But guys, it's a pretty cool series. Uh, if you like this style of video, let me know. Give it a shot. If you do listen to it, watch it. Let me know what you think. Uh, once again, I have no affiliation with them. Just sharing with you guys another good video series to learn from. Appreciate you guys, and we'll see you on the next one.